Hey everyone, welcome to this week's live stream. I'm Clifton, and we're gonna drink some bourbon. <laughs> um, cool. So, how is everyone doing tonight? I have probably the most bourbons I've ever had in front of me before a live stream sitting here, so I'm not planning to go through all of them, but we'll see how things go. I really do want to compare some things, so it's kind of my plan tonight, but we'll see how it goes. Um, welcome, Joseph and Brandon. Good to see you guys. Um, so if you saw the title of this video and the thumbnail, it's a little ambiguous because I feel like the term sister barrels isn't really a thing. Um, but I was kind of inspired to do this by a local store pick, which Brandon, you know of them, uh, K&L Wine and Spirits. They actually did two barrel picks um, from Knob Creek, and one is barrel number 8226, and one is barrel number 8225. So these were literally barrels sitting right beside each other, um, distilled on the same date, bottled on the same date, um, but they had different yields. So the the one of them had 168 bottles from it, one of them only had 120 bottles, so they had to proof down um, one more than the other to get the same amount of, you know, bottles from it. So I think it'd be really cool to try them back to back, see how similar and how different they are, being the fact that they are from literally the exact same location and the exact same age. So that's kind of the inspiration for this one. Um, I'm going to also start with the Elijah Craig's because I have something kind of similar going on over here. Um, basically, I have two Elijah Craig's. Um, they weren't right beside each other. And one is about a, almost a year older than the other one. But one of them is considered, the, the older one is considered classic Elijah Craig. So that's the one that I'm going to start with. Well, is the second one, similar to the Knob Creek, it had a lower yield, um, a lower yield compared to the other one. So the Elijah Craig... The one that's considered classic had 216 bottles. The one that's considered uh, not classic only had 120 bottles from it. So I thought it'd be really fun to compare them. Um, not exact, exactly. Yeah, you're probably right, Joseph. I don't know what I said, but I, maybe not exactly right beside it or whatever. But um, th they're pretty close. And these two are pretty close. So... Um, I just thought it would be pretty cool to try them out side by side. Um, Brendan, you got my Russell's pick. Oh, awesome. Th thank you for picking that up again. I, I'm excited to try that. Um, so it's a Camp Nelson pick um, that Brendan was fortunate enough to come across. Um, so I had to get that because I've had a trial of it. Um, I mean, I've had a sample of it that I really like, but I'd really like to explore it more um, because... I probably had had too many samples the night that I had that sample. Um, but yeah, so basically what I'm sipping on right now, before I get started with these, is another Elijah Craig store pick. As you can tell, I love store picks. <laughs> um, this is from a different liquor store. This is from Circus Liquor, and this one is only nine years old. Um, they put the little label there of like what Rick House and stuff it is there. Um, I thought, figured I would start with this one because this, one, this one's younger, and two, it's kind of a little bit different from the other two, so I kind of want to set my palette with this one. Um, so let me start with that one and just, I imagine it's going to be classic Elijah Craig. I mean, I don't imagine because I'm well into this bottle, but. <laughs> you know about wise. Yeah, so. I really do like this pick of Elijah Craig that I have. Um, this store isn't one that I would necessarily say is like my favorite per for picks. Um, I've really only tried two from them and both have been pretty similar to what you expect from the non-picked versions. Um, this one does remind me a lot of certain notes that I get from the barrel proof Elijah Craig. So that's always a good thing, but nothing too crazy with that one. And I imagine the next one is going to be very similar. Um, Oh yeah, this glass. Yeah, this actually came from a tasting event I did um, at a bar here called Seven Grand. Uh, you can see their, their logo is that little um, deer head. Um, they did like a, 
a, a whiskey night where they had brought out a bunch of different distilleries and we got to go home with these glasses so it was it was a pretty cool pretty cool night i really do love that bar i go there for their tastings they have what they call as the spirit guide society they actually have a podcast um so that's how you know a bar is good they have a podcast dedicated to whiskey um so I just really love that bar and the guy that runs it. He's just really cool. I've, I've only like sat down and talked with him like once before, um, but I just like that I ha- have a local place that's like my go-to. Do you guys have places like that where you guys are? I'm sure that some of you do, especially those in Kentucky. Um, um, yeah, it's just really cool. Brandon, you have one in. Um, well, I'm not. You're not that close to San Diego. San Diego has one too. Um, no, Brandon, I actually thought about it. It's just. Every time I go, I always take the metro there, so I don't really drive there, because it's right in the heart of downtown LA, which I hate driving in, so it would have been kind of inconvenient, especially if, like, you were driving home after, so it wouldn't have worked out that well, but no, seven grand, if you're ever in LA, um, if you're ever back here, man, like, let me know, we'll go, because they have a huge whiskey selection. So Joseph went to a newish restaurant last Friday and discovered they have, like, 40 bourbons. Wow, that's awesome. Especially, like, not being in Kentucky. Like, finding a a restaurant to say, you know, I never see that in restaurants. There's, like, a pizza place, like, literally walking distance from my apartment. um, And they have an awesome whiskey selection. They don't have a ton, but every single one they have is, like, a quality whiskey. You know, they have, like, Blanton's. They have have a Booker's. um, They have, like... I would say they have about eight bourbons, and they're all the things that you would want. So it, I don't know the prices on it. I've never gotten them. I always just get their cocktails. But <laughs> it's, it's just really cool to come across restaurants that have things like that. So totally feel you there. So yeah, so this one, I'm, I'm going to move on from this one now. Um, but it's it's good. I mean, I, I like, you said, like I said, I've been enjoying this bottle for a while. Um, oh, wow. Their, um, Weller, their Wellers are in the old bottles. That means not many people have been drinking it. That that's that's pretty cool. Hopefully they have it priced well. Sorry, I, just ate, <laughs> I ate a handful of peanuts right before this. <coughs> peanuts, by the way, um, because I had like I made like a Coke and um, bourbon earlier just to kind of I don't know make sure I wasn't starting fresh for you guys. Um, but I was like, oh crap, I feel it already. So I was like literally like two minutes before my stream ran in there, <laughs> ate a ton of them and now I'm like choking on them. So <laughs> sorry about that. <clears throat> so these two Elijah Craig bottles, um, I'm going to open them up. They're actually both brand new. I feel kind of guilty doing that because I have too many open bottles already. Um, as some of you know, <laughs> um, but I figured this is something I've been wanting to do since getting these bottles and the same with the Knob Creek. So I feel like this is a good occasion to open them up and see how they are. So this first one, I'll tell you a little bit about it once I pour it. I'll pour them both at the same time just so they have like equal opportunity to open up. So that was the first one. I'm going to put the second one. What are you guys drinking on tonight? Uh, I forgot to ask that. I usually ask that at the beginning, but... I always throw these plastic pieces on the floor. My cat attacks them. That's very true, Joseph, and I totally agree with that. I just want to make sure these have equal opportunity, which is why I'm doing that. But yeah, no, I totally, I totally agree that you really have to get into a bourbon to fully experience it. I mean, you guys know that, but a lot of people don't. They think like their first taste of something really is all that bourbon has to offer, and that's not true. I should have peeled that stick off a little more oh joseph i saw the picture you posted um cotton bakers yeah and i i agree i've only bought one bottle of bakers um and i wasn't it's not that i wasn't impressed with it you guys just know how much i love knob creek and i recently have started to fall in love with bookers i feel like bakers is like in a weird state right now it's like at a certain price point that's really similar to Knob Creek, honestly, in my area. Um, um, sorry, I'm like still choking on those peanuts. Um, so that's my deal with Bakers, I almost said Bookers. It's similar price point to Knob Creek single barrel, the store picks. Now I know that they are re-releasing it as a single barrel. Um, that's going to be pretty cool. And I am really looking forward to what they do with that. 
Um, so I'm giving, I'm not going to like dismiss them completely. It's just like at this point, I don't really see where it fits into what I like. Um, so Joseph has the Bakers. Brandon has the Elijah Keg small batch store pick. Oh, well, perfect pick. That's exactly what I'm um, drinking. And I imagine the, okay, so this is that weird one. So someone told me this last time. Um, so these are labeled as privately selected barrel from stocks of Elijah Craig. So I think these are single barrels, um, um, Brendan. From whatever, from what I can tell, these are single barrels. I think someone may have corrected me before, so I could be wrong, but it does say small batch, but it says a privately selected barrel. Um, oh, Joseph, you're drinking, sorry, I saw that earlier. You got a store pick this 11 years from South Carolina. What store is it, Joseph? Because I'm from South Carolina. Um, curious because that's awesome. Um, yeah, so the picks are single barrels. That's, that's kind of what I thought. And Joseph, you say the same thing. Um, this circus liquor pick I have of Elijah Craig, it tastes like standard Elijah Craig. So totally get that on that one too. Um, oh, you're drinking Evan Williams bottle and bond for the first time. How, what do you think? I, I really, I thought I didn't like that one. And I came back to it and I was like, wow, for like 15 bucks, 15 to 17 bucks. It's awesome. I'm curious to hear what you think of it, because, I mean, it's nothing, like, exceptional, but, like, for the money, it's, like, a little hidden gem there, I think. So, I got both of these in the glass. Um, I'll tell you about each of them. So, this first one, I'll hold up the serial number in case that means anything to you guys. It, it didn't to me. So, you can tell it's Private Pick from KNL. Um, and this one is... The older one. It was distilled on November 7th, 27, 2007, and bottled on June 17th, 2019. So almost 12 years old. This is the one that had a stock of 216 bottles, and this is the one they describe as classic Elijah Craig. So I imagine it's going to be very similar to this one. It's going to be nothing super, super, you know, unique. I could be wrong. But I think it's going to be pretty classic with the flavor profile compared to this next one. So let's see. Um, Joseph Polly's. I haven't heard of that. I know of, there's a place called Polly's Island, um, that's, which is like a city. Shared pick with surf beverage and beach beverage. Interesting. So that's from like coast, like Myrtle Beach area, South Carolina. That's awesome. Dang. I never even knew they... Um, I lived in Charleston, South Carolina, which is like a coastal town, but it was further south than like... Polly's Island, Myrtle Beach, um, but I would always take weekend trips up there. I, I That was really kind of before I got into bourbon, so I would have never known they did pics of it, but like you said, it's, it's about average, so kind of like the Circus Liquor one here, so um, Juan says it's surprisingly great for the price. Very sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's it's so sweet, but I mean, it's just I, I'm surprised by how cheap it is, and I, if it was much more than that, I don't think I would say it'd be worth it, but it's definitely my favorite in the Evan Williams lineup. Um, I love the 1783, but I think the Bottle and Bond definitely takes the cake. So, so let's start with this um, Elijah Craig from K&L. This is the first time having this. I just cracked this bottle. Oh, wow. I'm glad I saved a little bit of this other one. This one smells like a dessert. This one... This one actually smells really good. I, I just missed it earlier because they described it as classic Elijah Craig. That's not a bad thing. I love Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, and you guys know that too. Um, so let's go ahead and taste it, because on the nose, that's that's really good. Ooh. I tell you guys, if you guys have a chance, I know Steven, he's not here tonight, but um, he actually got a K&L pick of something up in New York. Um, if you guys get a chance to try their picks... There, there's something special because there's way more oak in that than I've ever gotten on Elijah and Craig. Even the barrel proof, it doesn't have that much oak in it. And I love that oak taste. Again, it's almost, the age of this one is a little, it's like 11 years. No, no, this, so, so sorry. This one's the one that's nearly 12 years. So this one, you can tell that age, that, that oak and that dark wood flavor, which I love, is definitely shining through on this one. Joseph, have you had a um, 
So you say that that pick is very similar to standard Elijah Craig. Have you had a really good Elijah Craig pick? Because if my only experience with Elijah Craig was this first one from Circus, which again, not to diss it, it's good. It's only nine years old. It lacks, it has a lot of that like sugary sweetness, brown sugar, classic Elijah Craig. But when you take it to the nearly 12 year mark, now you, some of you guys may have actually experienced Elijah Craig when it was 12 years. I, um, unfortunately, didn't have that. I jumped on Elijah Craig after it lost its 12 year age statement. So I've never had a 12 year old small batch Elijah Craig. I've had a 12 year old cast strength or barrel proof and it's so good. So this brings a lot of those flavors forward. I don't feel like it's as well rounded. I'm talking about the k &L pick right now. You know, it's not as full of flavor and well rounded as a barrel, barrel proof, obviously. Um, whereas, so the younger stuff has like a cinnamon quality, like this circus liquor, this nine year old pick has like a cinnamon, yeah, like a cinnamon sugar quality. This one though has a lot of those darker, deeper flavor profiles. So Joseph, you just had that one. Yeah, I definitely encourage you to try the other ones. Um, that's kind of what I want to do tonight. Oh yeah. This one that I thought would be the classic. Elijah Craig, the one that I thought was going to be basic and boring. This is amazing. Um, I will be treasuring this for a while. Um, but I am curious to try it side by side with this other Elijah Craig. I'll show you the serial number of that one. So this one, the 551, is a year younger. It was distilled 112108 and bottled 62719, so bottled 10 days after the other one. Um, this is what they described as a short cask. So basically, this one only yielded 120 bottles compared to the 216 bottles from the other one. So that's, that's a pretty big difference. So what I expected this one, the oakiness that was in the other one, I expected it to be amped up. Even though this is younger, it's a year younger, I expected to have a lot of those darker, tanniny flavors that you would expect from something that is older because again i don't know what happened i don't know if like there's angel share or there was a leak or something something happened in this barrel somewhere in its process and they only got about half the yield as the other one so um curious to see how it stands up side by side with this one that i think is really good um oh brandon thank you i saw you sent a sample that'd be awesome um Joseph said he's had the 12 year and one from 1997. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Um, got a bunch of Elijah Craig barrel proofs to mess around with regular stuff. Yeah, the, I love Elijah Craig barrel proof. You guys know that's like one of my favorites. I thought it was my favorite, but if you watched last week's video, my last live stream, you may see that that one was dethroned. So maybe you have to check it out to see. So, um, by the way, if you're watching the replay and you're new here, I would love if you could subscribe. Um, really trying to hit that 2,000 point of subscribers. So, getting there so i just wanted to say thank you for showing up and yeah i appreciate you guys here so <laughs> um so joseph much more water added to proof it down are you talking about this one that is the um had a lower yield the 120 the 120 bottles um so does that is that really what it means so i'm curious so they say let me see what they say here i saved the page for when they're describing it yeah, they didn't talk about what the proof is. They, they do mention that on the Knob Creek, which we're going to get to shortly. Um, they don't mention the proof there, so. Um, wow. 2015 George T. Stagg lost 86% to Angel Share. That's crazy. Wow. Um, so let's go ahead and try this one. So as Joseph said, this one they, they would have had to add a good bit more water to to proof down to that. 94 proof point, which is the same on all of their um, single barrel store picks. Oh, it is different on the nose for sure. Let me go to this one real quick. That makes sense, Joseph. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's weird. I, I almost want to say peppermint. I've never really gotten that on Elijah Craig. It has like a, almost like a rye spice. I mean, like, normally with rye, I say, like, wintergreen mint or, like, a cool, you know, like, the refreshing kind of mint. This one is almost like a candy cane. Um, it brings back a lot of the sweetness that I got off of this nine-year one. 
Which again, it makes sense. It, it is younger. It's, it's a year younger than the twelve year. But there's something there's something else there, so I'm curious how it tastes. So Joseph, I'm noticing something. You know how you said that one seems like it had a lot more water to proof it down? That tastes really low proof. That tastes like an 80 proof for whiskey. This one, however, the one that is the typical release, 216 bottles. <laughs> that was a car. Um, wow. Whoa, that's unexpected. The standard, the 12 year one that had the typical release, classic Elijah Craig, is really good and spicy and really not well. I, I don't want to say well rounded because I feel like the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof I said earlier was more well rounded. But dang, that's honestly disappointing. The one that's younger but had a smaller yield, I honestly thought this would be more flavorful. But Joseph, you, you point out a good fact. They had to add a lot more water to this one. I think it's pretty obvious. It tastes like if you took Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and added your own water. Like, it lacks the tingles, the mouth tingles. Which is so odd because these are the exact same proof. I've never experienced anything like that. Um... Yeah. I mean, does that make sense to you guys? I know Joseph, it obviously makes sense to him because he just explained it to me. But, um, wow. No, 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 Joseph. You say they probably do. I think it tastes very watered down. Even though it's the same proof, all of the nice, interesting notes that I really got on this other one, it's, like, very muted. It's just, like... It's just like not there. And I, I, I'm i not being biased because I wanted this one to be better. I honestly had a feeling that this one was going to be the best of the bunch. Um, which is why I saved it for last. But I mean, I'm not going to say it's not, not good. It's classic Elijah Craig. But it, even compared to the regular small batch, it lacks a lot of the really good things I love about Elijah Craig. And... I mean, again, I only paid 30 bucks for it. So I'm not saying like, oh no, what a failure. Um, it's just, I'm really surprised. I do get that same oakiness that I get from the 12 year one, but everything else is just like washed away. I hate to say that, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's good. Don't get me wrong, but it's just not what I expected it to be. Oh, Steven, by the way, hey, what's up? <laughs> So I'm doing, right now I'm on my, so I'm doing what we call sister barrels. So what I'm going to do is I, oh, hey Ian, what's up? Good timing. So I don't have to explain this twice. I found two barrels of two different whiskeys that are very similar. So the Knob Creek barrels were aged the same amount of time, bottled the same time, and they're literally barrels beside each other or near each other. Elijah Craig... One is older, whereas one is had a lower yield. So I thought, up to this point, I thought that the lower yield one was going to be packed with intense flavor. But I'm learning, based on Joseph's fact that they probably watered this one down a bit more, it tastes lacking of that flavor. So the one that was the standard yield is well-rounded, smooth, probably my favorite store pick of Elijah Craig I've ever had. Whereas the other one, not so much. It's not bad, but it's just like it lacks the oomph that I love about Elijah Craig. So um, that's my assumption so far. Now we're going to move to the Knob Creek very shortly. Um, and that's going to be a little bit of a different situation. Um, similar, but different. So they're both picked at the same time. Um, both by the same company. Um, they're just two different barrels. So I'm curious to see how that affects things. So... Oh, Joseph, you're drinking the Michter's Barrel Strength Rye. Good choice. I love that one. I feel like I say that every time you say that. <laughs> it's just a really good, really good pour. So I'm going to set these over here. I think we're ready to move on to Knob Creek. What do you guys think? So 
Steven, same here. I do want to try the 13-year-old knob or Baker's. That's what I was saying earlier. I I think Baker's is good, but I feel like it's in a weird place where it doesn't really blend in between Knob Creek Single Barrel and Booker's. But I think if they, they add that age statement and they put that single barrel on there, that's going to be interesting. So, All right, Brandon says let's do it. So this one is a new bottle. Um, I took the wax off because you guys know Knob Creek wax sucks. Um, so... I haven't tried this one yet. I'll tell you about this. Once I pour, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pour it and then tell you guys about it. Oh, wow. That's so dark compared to these other ones. You want to try the new Little Boogie in? Absolutely. Me too. I've been looking for that one. I've tried the two. I think, Joseph, I think you sent me a sample. Or is either, no, it was either you or Brian Allred. One of you sent me a sample of uh, Little Book. Um... Little book two, and it was really good. I think I think it was Brian, honestly. I so Stephen Pikesville. Interesting thing about that, I actually tried Pikesville, based on oh it, it was Brian. Sorry, I get confused because the same time that he sent me those samples, um, that was when we exchanged bottles. So I get confused sometimes. So, um, so Pikesville. Wait, got kicked out on your shift, Ian. Uh, hopefully it was just not because you did anything wrong. Um, well, I'm drinking Knob Creek now, so if you got a Knob Creek, definitely pour that. I know you said you had a few 14-year-olds. These are almost 14. They're like late 13-year-olds, so uh, late 13-year-olds. That sounds so weird to say. Um, but, oh, wow, Joseph, you got to order in for Little Book 3. That's awesome. I am going to keep an eye out. I don't think it's going to sell out. Um that quickly in this area little book usually sticks on the shelves in california at least um it's the last day Ian. Oh, okay cool is this the last day of your night shifts um i know you've been talking about them how they've kind of <laughs> consumed you lately um so let me tell you about the knob creeks real quick um this first one first of all both of them were distilled and bottled on the exact same day oh, okay ian awesome these were these were just these are barreled on, I say distilled, you guys know what I mean, barreled, almost the same day. December 1st, 2004. 2004. I was 11 years old when this was barreled. It was selected on November 13th, 2018. That is one month shy of 14 years old. This other one, exact same thing. So, um... should hang out sometime we should do one tomorrow oh like, like a google hangout i would love to do a google hangout um perry mentioned earlier he mentioned last week that he would love to do a live stream with me so um that's in the works um i would love to do like a tandem live stream even with you guys honestly steven or bannon or ian or joseph if i could ever get you guys on camera i would love to do like a split screen trying the same thing that would be so fun i think that would be awesome so if you guys if you guys ever want to do that uh let me know <laughs> Um, so yeah, so these were both distilled, barreled, and bottled on the same date. So, so the 8226 right here, which is the first one I'm going to try, this one had a yield of 168 bottles. So, had a higher yield, more, this is also described as more traditional Knob Creek. Again, 14 year old, you know it's going to be good. I mean, I have not had a bad older pick of Knob Creek. So I'm tr excited to try this for the first time tonight, but I'm also going to compare it to this other one that was the barrel almost right next to it that, um, yeah, I'm just curious to see that I love. That's what I was going to say. I, I really do like that one. So curious to see how this holds up and if there is a difference between the two, because that's the whole core of today's episode. I want to see if two barrels that set right next to each other for the same amount of time, if you can taste the difference. So we're finally to that point. I want to start with the or Elijah Craig because it was lower proof, but we'll see how this goes. Oh yeah, you guys know I'm a sucker for these older Knob Creek picks. I know you, some of you guys are too that have them. They are just so, so good. They're they're so Ian Betts will taste different. I I think so, and I don't. I'm not gonna say that my palate will be able to pick up the differences as much as some people's, um, but. 
I, I kind of feel like they're going to taste a little different too. So, um, Brandon, you are on the one I'm about to drink right now. So this one is um, the 8226. This is the one that I have not had before. Um, the 8225 was like sold out by the time you got it. And I want my only bottle of it. So um, Ian loves it out me too. So Brandon, this is the same bottle that I have for you. So oh, it smells so good. Brandon, have you had any of the older um, Knob Creek's picks? Um, I feel like you said that you hadn't, but maybe you have. But you, you tried mine while you were here. So the one that you tried was this other one. So they're going to be similar for sure. Let's go ahead and taste it. Ah, oh, that's good. Whew. I'll tell you this up front. If you don't like the wood, oaky notes of bourbon, if that turns you off, you won't like Knob Creek, these 14-year-old picks. You just won't like them. But if you love that dark, deep wood flavor mixed with some dark caramel notes, this is the epitome of happiness. This is why I think Jim Beam is probably my favorite distillery. I mean, you guys saw last week. Oh, no spoilers. But um, <laughs> you don't know if you tried my Knob Creek pick or if you did. had a lot of bourbon on it. I think I poured it for you. And I think that's what made you say, like, yeah, order me one. I think... I know that you liked it when you tried it. That's all I remember. But, um, yeah. So, ah, gosh, this stuff is amazing. I honestly think, is that weird to say that I think Jim Beam is my favorite distiller? I feel like that's very generic to say, like, oh, I like Jim Beam bourbon. Like, every nobody on the street says they like Jim Beam bourbon. But, like, no spoilers, but Booker's last week made it pretty high on my list. I'm not going to say anything specific, but Booker's made it really high on my last my list last week of my favorite barrel proof bourbons. This Snob Creek. Whew, this is this is good stuff. On the nose, you don't really get as much oakiness. You get a lot more of the sweetness. But you get a really balanced. The nose of this is so balanced. It's more balanced than Elijah Craig hands down. Um, you're hit with that oak at first and it's kind of overwhelming if you're not used to something like that but once you breathe in after you after you swallow and you breathe in you get a rush of sweetness down your throat and I think Knob Creek excels in the whole mouth feel mouth experience department um, Ian says Jim Beam is so underrated in the bourbon nerd community totally absolutely that's exactly what I was saying People think like, oh, Jim Beam. Oh, what do they make? Jim Beam Black. You know, things like that. Like, <sighs> Jim Beam is so good. And I know people have preferences. I mean, people, Buffalo Trace is their favorite distillery. Most people we know like Wild Turkey. Um, I do like Wild Turkey. But <sighs> Jim Beam, just the stuff they're putting, their higher end stuff at Jim Beam is just absolutely, hands down, the best bourbon I've ever had. So... Um, Joseph, welcome back. Brandon says, Jim Beam has too many releases. I wish they would focus more on the core releases. I bet they would taste so much better. I kind of get that. Um, so what I'll say is, I, well, Brandon, you, you tried a sample of the Jim Beam Bonded. I don't think they're like, things with the label Jim Beam are that good. Um, they're Jim Beam White Label, Black Label, Bonded, even their Rye. I can't even think with the Jim Beam name. Even, I, honestly, you guys may have seen the picture in the group chat. Um, I just bought a 1.75 liter of Jim Beam uh, Kentucky Fire. They're like Fireball competitor. Only, only because it was on sale for $6.99. So that's now in my freezer. That's my new party drink. But um, anything with the Jim Beam label, it's just not my favorite. Other than Distiller's Cut. You guys have heard me rant about, not, not rant rave about distiller's cut distiller's cut is the only thing with the gem beam label on it that i really really like um joseph says i was trying not to make any knob jokes around clifton and it got and it got flagged wait <laughs> did it really because i know this chat some of those flags chat so maybe um uh, steven wants the new joe wants the new joseph steven wants the new bookers me too i actually when i went to go pick up a um actually when i went to go pick up these elijah craigs I asked them if they had gotten in um, the new bookers because I knew I knew it was going around. I'd seen posts pop up from all over the country, people getting it in. Um, and my store, this store, by the way, is so cool. 
they they don't really I'm not really um in cahoots with them but sometimes they they recognize my face and there's like a couple people there that'll say like hey we got in this if you're interested um so I'm, I'm slowly working my way up but I was there to pick up these Elijah Craigs and I was like hey did you guys get the new bookers in um and they said that they um just got an in uh uh order in from Buffalo or not Buffalo Trace from Jim Beam um, and they saw there were bookers there, and they're like, oh, the new bookers. And they're like, oh, no, it's just more Teresa's batch. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, I, I've heard mixed things. And like, yeah, we have too. <laughs> so it was just it was just kind of funny because I, I never really relate, like, in the whiskey world with people here in real life. So that was so cool. So I was like, I'll just keep an eye out. And, like, I guess I should have asked, like, did you guys get anything else interesting in? But I don't know. It was just, it was just I, I really do like the store. And I think the people there are so knowledgeable and they really do care about their customers. So I'll say that. Um, K K and L Wine and Spirits. Stephen, you had a pick from them. Um, they're just they're just really good really good folks. <laughs> um, Brandon says it hasn't hit the West Coast yet. I know. I'm hoping, Brandon. I'm hoping. So the Teresa's batch sold out for you, Joseph. It's it's still very prevalent here. So. Teresa's Batch and um, Shiny Barrel are both very available here. So, And Ian, I, I totally understand. I think it probably isn't as bad as people say it is. Up until my last live stream, I thought Booker's was kind of like something that I wasn't that interested in. I was like, if it gets mediocre reviews, I'll just skip it and get the next one. But after the last live stream, I'm like, maybe I should get every Booker's because I like it that much. So... Um, yeah, no, I, I don't think it's bad. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's great. So, um, just checking my phone real quick. So where were we? Okay. We were tasting this. Let me get one more taste before I move on to the other barrel that was almost right next to it. It may not have been right beside it, but whatever. It's, it's pretty much it's sister barrel. Do you guys hear that? Is my Google searching for things? What did Google search for? Okay, Google searched for this before I move on to the other barrel that was almost right next to it. May not have been right next to it, but whatever it is. <laughs> Sometimes these like voice assistants just like are crazy. Um, oh no, Joseph, that sucks. I love Kitchen Table. Kitchen Table is an amazing release. Um, so this Knob Creek pick, excellent. So Brandon, when you get this, if you like their older stuff, you're going to love it. So let's move on to the other one. This one had a higher yield. This had 160, or sorry, this one had a lower yield. This one had 120 barrels, bottles. Okay, get to that point of the night. Um, so this one had a lower yield. So I'm curious to see if that really does make a difference with Knob Creek. So let's go ahead and try it. Well, on the nose, let's, let's do the nose first. It's almost more alcohol, like alcoholic on the nose. You get like those vapors and those fumes at first. <laughs> it's Clayton in the house. A little bit. Not necessarily like I'm like so drunk. It's just like trying to organize my thoughts because I literally have six six bottles in front of me. So it's getting a little difficult to organize those thoughts. But getting there, Brandon, exactly. I try to limit myself, you guys. Like that's why I only do one hour streams. If I did much longer... And I was trying to f squeeze in so much content in longer time. It just, it wouldn't work well. And you guys would be like making fun of me. I mean, you guys are already making fun of me, but whatever. So, um, nose honestly is very similar. Um, which again, they're sister barrels. So obviously, yeah, on the nose, honestly, I think these are, I would say on my untrained nose, my nose is only based on my experience with bourbon so far. I think these are almost identical on the nose. There's a lot more alcohol burn on the, which is interesting though. There's more alcohol burn on the one that's been open for a while that's opened up um, versus the one that I literally just opened. There's less alcohol burn on that one. So that, that's interesting. Um, pepperoni. Oh, that's weird, Joseph. <laughs> um I mean, it's very smoky. It's very oaky. So I could see why maybe it, it gets you get that note. But let's go ahead and taste this one. It's almost slightly sweeter. The one that I've had open for a while is slightly sweeter. 
Um, and it's also, again, it's, it, it had less of a yield. So let's see. That one. If ever, if ever you would call a 120 proof bourbon smooth, that one is smooth. And Joseph, going back to your point, the one with the lower yield, I do feel like there was more water added to it. I had never, that never crossed my mind before. But when you're working with 120 proof whiskey, that is not a bad thing. I think this really makes this super mellow. Um, it's... It's not as complex as the one that had the higher yield, the new bottle. So, Brandon, you'll be glad to hear that. The one that you got, um, I think, is more complex. Um, it's not as complex as that one. Um, but overall, it's still really good. Um, so that's good to hear that my bottle that I'm, like, almost out of is, like, not my favorite. So Stephen, you mentioned citrus notes. I'm, I'm looking for that because I do get that sometimes on Knob Creek. Um, it's there. It's like at the very tip of the tongue when you first swallow these like older Knob Creek picks. Um, there is some citrus there. I know you're talking about bakers, but um, that noise are you in Hollywood? I am on a pretty, I'm in North Hollywood. So I'm not like in the crazy part of Hollywood, but this street right here gets, <laughs> There's a very, I'll just say complex intersection up here. Um, Brandon knows it's, it's intersection up here is really weird. And there's always accidents and there's always craziness. So sorry about all the noises. I, I, I really apologize. But <laughs> um, um, oh, yeah, Brandon. Yeah, that'd be awesome to compare those. Um, especially because you got that from um, Frugal McDougal, right? <laughs> so those of you that aren't familiar with that, that sounds like weird. Um, it's, it's a liquor store. It's very popular in like, I guess, Tennessee, North Carolina, and South Carolina. It's a huge, big box store. It's almost the size, it's literally the size of Total Wine. Like that's how big and popular they are in the Carolinas at least. So I'm curious to hear how their picks are because they, they obviously know what they're doing. They're, they're huge. So you got it for the name. I know, I know. Frugal McDougal. Um, yeah, it's just... Every time I go home for Christmas, I always stop by there. And sometimes, okay, oh, God, you guys want to hear the craziest story. I stopped there two days before New Year's Eve last year. The line at the register is at Frugal McDougal. Went from the register back to the far back aisle, which is, like, where they have their, like, like really shitty, like, giant size things. Wrapped around an aisle and came back out to the register. So people were literally going down an aisle, curving around from the back of the store, coming to the register to check out. I wasn't there for that, so I just left empty-handed. But they are so, so popular. Um, a month short of 15 years. Oh, Brandon, that sounds amazing. I have only had the 14-year ones, like the ones that are closer to 14 years. Like This one's like 13 and a half. Um, if people need to get stopped for New Year's, that's right, Stephen. I mean... I was just so shocked. I have never seen that many people there. Like, at a liquor store in general. Like, it was, like, the release of, like, some, like, special, like, lottery or something. But that's how crazy it was. And, Joseph, you say that almost everyone just had, like, like, not cartons, but, like, handles of basic shit. And I was like, I don't need to be here. That was just, like, a mess. But... No, I imagine that their store, their prices are really good too, Brandon. I hope I hope you had a good price on that. But in South Carolina, the prices of frugal McDougals, I say South Carolina. Okay, the one store that I know of is on the border of South Carolina and North Carolina, so it's technically in South Carolina, but it's right at the border. So there's not that many stores. It's just the stores that are here are huge. So I knew that Joseph. I actually um, was surprised by that fact. <laughs> Uh, but Buffalo Trace also has, like, um, Sazerac also has, like, a lot of Canadian whiskey, too, so. $60, I mean, that's $10 more than I pay for my store picks here in California, but, um, 
not bad for South Carolina. I mean, or the Southeast, whatever. I noticed things were way more expensive out there when I lived out there, so that's not a bad price at all. Um, so let me get, although, <laughs> so I don't know about you guys, but you can't see that. I always, every time I open an Knob Creek, I always get a piece of the wax in my whiskey. Every single time. Um, so there's a piece of the wax in here, in case you're curious. I saw it, I was like, is that barrel char? But no, it's just wax. I don't think it's made in Kentucky either, Ian. I think it's, honestly, I think it's like a mix of like their Canadian whiskey. Um, you never have Steven. I don't know. I just, I hate Knob Creek wax. It's just so messy. Their, their wax is terrible. Like I literally, it just falls on the floor and it gets everywhere. Maker's Mark's wax is awesome. Booker's wax from the same distillery is actually really nice. So I don't know what they're doing with Knob Creek, but they, they need to step their wax game up because it's just a mess. <laughs> Barrel char if you bring a Ziploc bag. Whoa, that's a weird fact, Brandon. Um, I don't know what I would do with barrel char. Um, smell it. I wouldn't eat it. That's interesting. Maybe I'll have to bring a plastic bag just to find out. I'm going to their ghost tour. Um, Ian, Ian's going there too. We're going to do their ghost tour Friday night, um, which is going to be crazy. But they definitely do tastings. Um, they do tastings during their ghost tour. So, Because I, I was debating it. Um, Ian, I'm curious if you had the same dilemma. Um, I think I'm going to go to the Knob Creek, or sorry, the Buffalo Trace gift shop before Chad and Sarah's meetup. I think I'm going to go to the gift shop during the day um, and then come back for the tasting at night because they're doing a ghost tour at night, but during the day, I think that's, the gift shop's not going to be open the, during the ghost tour, honestly. I don't think so. So I'm curious to hear what you're going to do that. Oh, yeah, for sure, Brandon. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be, like, late October, so perfect time for a ghost tour. Um, if you leave Knob Creek in the car long enough, it melts. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because it's already pretty pretty messy as it is. Oh, Ian, you're going to the gift shop as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just I just want to... I imagine their gift shop's not going to be open. I don't want to rely on their meetup to be able to go to the gift shop, but I'm pretty sure they're going to do a tasting during the... Um, during the ghost tour so i'm excited to try what they offer us so um brandon says they don't release anything special bourbon wise not sure what you're looking for are you talking about the gift shop no i'm really honestly i'm really not looking for anything special from buffalo trace um i have plenty of blantons um maybe rock hill farms i, I don't know if they'd have that that's the only thing that i'm looking for from buffalo trace um honestly but I know that's probably not going to, I'm not going to come by that. So we'll see. I just, I just want to hit up all the gift shops. Even if I'm not buying their bourbon, I want some merch. I want some hats, some shirts. Um, I believe that Joseph. Um, I heard about Jägermeister so much, like in high school, like just hearing people talk about it. Um, but when I got to college, which I went to college from 2011 to 2015, Fireball was where it was that everyone did shots of Fireball. It was so popular, which I got that, like I said, the bottle of the Kentucky Fire from Jim Beam. Um, it's basically like Fireball, honestly. All they have is Blanton's Eagle Rare, E.H. Taylor Small Batch, and that's pretty much it. Okay, I'm not, honestly, Brandon, I'm not going anywhere with high hopes to get any special bottles. Honestly, I will be happy if I leave Kentucky with some of the exclusives like, um, J.W. Dant and um, what's the other bottle and bond um, readily available? Um, not Heaven Hill bottle and bond, but there's another there's another have readily available bottle and bond that's Kentucky exclusive that I really want. J.W. Dant is one, and um, I can't think of the other one. You guys probably know. It's the one that Chad and Sarah always brag about. <laughs> JTS Brown, that's the one I was thinking of, Steven. Yeah, so, yeah, I just, I really want some Kentucky exclusives. Like, that's so cool to me, things that I can't get anywhere except Kentucky. That's more exciting to me. Obviously, I'm going to try to get the Elijah Craig um, grenade, but really, there's not really very much that I'm looking for that's, like, high-end special bottles. Um, 
Brandon, I have heard that. I've heard that their tasting is literally just like their their bourbon cream, their Eagle Rare, things like that. But Ian, I had the exact same thought, which is why I allowed myself to justify the cost. Because I mean, you know, that that's pretty pricey for their their tours they're they're planning. But I justified it because I'm like, they know people. They're also gonna bring stuff on our little party bus thing. I think it'll be worth it. So, I I am in that same mindset, Ian. Um, oh, thank you, Joseph. Wait, you can get that in uh, Washington? Really? That's weird. I I didn't even realize it was anywhere except Kentucky. Um, Stephen, that's a good point because I had almost forgotten. I originally said that I would only try. No, no, that that goes with what I was saying. I raised that thought. Um, so when I say Kentucky exclusive, I originally meant New Riff and Wilderness Trail. Luckily, New Riff just made it out to California, so that was not really as included in that, but I would love to try Wilderness Trail. That's one of the ones that, like, you guys may have seen, I, I messaged Joseph, like, hey, you got Wilderness Trail? That's one of the ones I've been dying to try, so that's definitely going to be one of the ones I want to pick up. Um, just not Bob and Bonnie, gotcha, Ian. Um. vintage funk type flavor it's great that's awesome joseph yeah i'll let you know i'm literally going to be in kentucky in what like 40 days 45 days so if i don't come home with that i would love to um have a bottle of it so definitely let me know Ian, i think we're going to hit up the same shops i mean both of us are going to like hit up swan and be like hey where are the best stores i think we're going to be like seeing a lot of each other i'll just say that um are you you're driving ian right um, uh, if you're driving, I'm like, damn, I should have just had you pick me up at the airport. <laughs> um, I'm getting a rental car for the, um, half of my trip. I'm going to have a rental car for, um, driving from the Louisville airport to Frankfurt. I'm going to have it doing while I'm in Frankfurt. And then when I return back to Louisville, which I'm spending my second half of the trip in Louisville, I'm going to, um... I'm going to return the rental car and just walk around. So, um, you already texted me when to go hunting on Friday. Hey, keep me updated, dude, because I I actually am also interested in joining you. So, let me know. I would love to just kind of spend the day hunting for things. I mean, we're gonna be right there where he lives, so I think we're gonna be seeing a lot of Swan. Hopefully, I really do hope because he seems like a great guy, and hopefully a lot of Perry too. I mean, I know he's in um, Lexington, so it's a little bit further, but um, yeah. One hang all day that can save you money. Uh, yeah, no, I still, I still do. I need the rental car to get to Louisville, so no worries about the rental car. But that's awesome that you're um, driving. That definitely makes things easier for you. Um, but no, for sure, we'll we'll hang out on Friday because I I want to get in on that hunting action. I actually I do have a tour at Castle and Key scheduled for Friday, um, so I met can meet up with you guys halfway through that so don't get your hopes up you rarely saw them i mean that's honestly joseph i've kind of gotten that impression too i know they're very busy um i know that chris and lil are there right now and they've seen very little i don't think they've even seen swan um but i i totally do understand and i know they're busy but um, at least we'll be seeing Chad and Sarah because we're paying to see Chad and Sarah. <laughs> um, but no, no, I, I really do. It, I would be sorely, sorely disappointed if I don't get a chance to meet Perry or Swan while I'm there. I mean, Ian, you've already met them, but they just seem like great guys. So we got super sidetracked, but I have five minutes of my stream left. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's so good to talk to you guys about these things because like no one I know has ever been to Kentucky. So like getting this little insider info from you, Brandon, and figuring this stuff out with you, Ian, really does help. So, so final thoughts on these sister barrels. I keep doing air quotes. I need to stop that. I think in the world of literal barrels that were right beside each other, they are extremely similar.
I do think that my barrel that I've had open for a while does lack a little bit of intensity, but this new one that I just opened really does have it. So again, Joseph made a very good point early on. The ones with the lower yield likely had more water added to them, and I think that really does affect the flavor. So again, this is info you don't normally know. I only know this because this store is super transparent. Sorry, I just spit. The store is super transparent, and they want you to know this stuff. So I really don't think you should discourage anything. I think you should go try your store picks. Store picks are the best things out there, honestly, in the world of bourbon. I have never had a store pick that I've hated. So I'll say that. I've had some store picks that weren't my favorite, but I've had some that I haven't. I have never had one that I hated. So um, Joseph said, I spent three days with Chad and Sarah and two hours with Harry and Swan and Curtis. Oh, wow. Uh, we had a great time. Okay. No, I'm, I really, so that was kind of my fear with planning this trip to Kentucky, especially early on when I was planning it back in, um, like May, when I was going to come out for the, um, Paris meetup, I was a little worried that I wouldn't be able to meet up with the people that I wanted to meet with. Um, but fortunately with Chad and Sarah's thing, I'm pretty much guaranteed a day with them. <laughs> Hopefully unless they cancel. Um, Yeah. I mean, again, it's not that big of a deal. There's so many things I want to do in Kentucky that don't involve, you know, meeting people. Um, but I, I really do. These guys are literally... So coming from someone that's been on YouTube since 2007 that had, like, YouTube idols. Um, there go with the air quotes again. Um, currently, Chad, Sarah, and even the Perry's not really on YouTube. These are the people that, like, I look forward to watching their videos and I look forward to listening to their podcast. Um... I just, I really do look up to these people. So getting a chance to meet them and hang out with them would really be a dream come true. And it would really make this trip amazing. But if that doesn't happen, I'm not gonna, not gonna fret too much. I'm gonna still have a good time. So does you get seven distilleries and 30 liquor stores? Oh, wow. How long were you there? Oh, you said three days, seven distilleries in three days. That's awesome. God, I think I'm going to probably plan on two to three at the most a day. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm not going to over plan. I'm going to, oh, you're there for a week. Okay. That makes more sense. <laughs> um, I do want to hit, I have a select few of distilleries that I absolutely must hit because why else would I fly out there if I wasn't hitting the ones I want to hit? Um, the rest are like, I might show up at their gift shop, see what they have, maybe do a tasting, but they're not like must do's. So I think I'm going to have a good time no matter what. I'm going to be there for one, two, three, four, five nights. It's going to be a great time. So with that, um, I'm going to close out for the night. Um, I still have five glasses of whiskey in front of me. I'm going to share these with my husband who is in there patiently waiting. Um, he just texted me saying that we're going to get, um, there's a burger place across the street from us. He's like, we're going to go get burgers tonight. So we're going to go get burgers and we're going to drink some bourbon and I will talk to you guys later. Ian, I see your messaging in the group. So I'm like, what is he saying? I'll see you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> um, thank you, Brandon. I will. Um, do we get to meet him in Kentucky? Yes, Ian. He is coming to Kentucky. So he'll be with me. And fortunately, he's a big bourbon fan. He's not like, oh, I'll try it occasionally. No, I've gotten him to bourbon. So he likes bourbon. So he will fully indulge with all of us. So it'll be a it'll be a fun time so great hanging with you guys thank you guys so much for showing up um brandon joseph ian and steven ian stevens like even stevens okay anyways <laughs> um thank you guys so much and i'll see you guys next video have a great night bye